Hello, my name is Dulto McLaughlin and I work in the temperature and humidity section of the National Metrology Laboratory located in Glasnevin, Dublin. The NML provide calibration services in many fields. For more information on the NML and to find out if we can calibrate your equipment, visit the NSAI website at the location seen here. In this presentation, I'm going to go through and explain the contents of a typical NSAI calibration certificate. Hopefully, this will make it easier to understand the structure which is compliant with the requirements for calibration certificate contents laid down in ISO 17025. The basic layout of the certificate is the same for all the different sections of the NML, although the results may be presented slightly differently depending on the best layout for the measurements made. I'll be using a temperature calibration certificate as an example, but later in the presentation, we'll have a look at a few different layouts from other sections. The NML normally issue hard copies of their certificates, which accompany the instrument when returned to the customer. The first page of our certs are printed on special embossed paper, which has a polygon design in its background. The first page of the NML calibration certificate contains details of the instrument and customer. In this section, you can see the name and address of the customer. This is followed by a unique certificate number. The first two digits of the cert number indicate the year in which it was issued. Under the certificate number are the details of the instrument to be calibrated, also known as the unit under test. A unique instrument ID will also appear here, which may be a serial number or an identification assigned by the customer. If one or more detachable probes form part of the measurement system, their individual IDs will also be printed here. The order number and date received follow the instrument details, as does the procedure number. This number corresponds to the standard operating procedure followed during the calibration. A brief description of the procedure may also be included in this section. The following section of the calibration certificate outlines the reference standards used for the calibration, a description ID number and the calibration due date for each standard is listed. Beneath the standards are the signatures of those involved in the calibration. On the left are the details of the persons who carried out the actual calibration and to the right is the signature of the person who reviewed and approved the certificate. Underneath are the calibration date and the date on which the certificate was issued. The issue date may be several days after the calibration date as it can take some time to compile and review the certificate. Finally, at the bottom of page one, you may find the CIPM logo and a statement regarding the international approval status of the results contained in the certificate. This statement and logo is issued by the International Committee for Weights and Measures, known as the CIPM. The statement outlines the details of the Mutual Recognition Arrangement, or MRA, which gives international recognition to the measurement results reported on a calibration certificate containing the logo. Permission to use this logo is dependent on having an ISO 17025 compliant quality system, which the NML has. For further information on the CIPM MRA, go to the website displayed here. Page two of an NML calibration certificate contains two important sections. The first outlines the terms and conditions associated with the calibration certificate. The second section declares the decision rule used by the NML. This rule is used where compliance to a specification has been declared on the certificate. The explanation of the decision rule is a mandatory requirement of the 2017 version of ISO 17025 and is a recent addition to the NML calibration certificates. The following results pages 
will describe the calibration of a high accuracy digital thermometer by comparison in a calibration bath. As can be seen, the unit under test is calibrated by comparing its readings to those of a reference thermometer, which is traceable to national standards. After page two comes the results pages for the calibration. Where an accuracy specification is available, this will be displayed before the results. The manufacturer's specification may consist of separate values for the display and for the probes connected to the display. If the customer has provided a specification, this will be displayed here also. The specification may also refer to an international standard. Under the accuracy specifications, information about the instrument configuration may be present. For example, in this case, unique coefficients associated with the calibrated probe are displayed. This information is present to allow the, re the user reconfigure their device should it need to be changed for any reason. Below this section are the actual calibration results presented in tabular format. The presentation of results can vary significantly depending on the type of instrument. In this example, we see the typical layout for a high accuracy digital thermometer. Each row contains the results obtained at a particular temperature set point. The first column contains the readings from the reference standard. The next column contains the readings of the unit under test. The next shows the difference between the two readings, which is expressed as a correction for NML temperature certificates. The final column contains the expanded uncertainty associated with the calibration result at that particular set point. In this case, you can see that the instrument meets the manufacturer's and client's accuracy specifications comfortably. Let's have a look at a different scenario, however. In this case, you can see that several symbols are printed next to the corrections. These symbols are referred to on page two of the calibration certificate. The first case is a pound symbol, and as can be seen from page two, this refers to a calibration result where the instrument would meet the accuracy specification if the uncertainty of measurement weren't considered. The second symbol is an ampersand which indicates that the error found would exceed the permitted accuracy specifications if the uncertainty weren't considered. The third symbol is a dollar, which according to page two indicates that the instrument exceeds the permitted accuracy even when the uncertainty of measurement is considered. Many types of instrument can be adjusted should the errors found exceed the permitted accuracy specifications. Where this is possible, as found results and results after adjustment will be present on the certificate. In this case, it was possible to adjust the thermometer by recalculating and entering new coefficients for the probe. After adjustment, the instrument was recalibrated at the same set points as previously. If we now compare the results to our specification, we can see that the instrument achieves compliance at all the set points. The last page on the calibration certificate contains any additional comments relating to the calibration. Where compliance with a specification has been determined, a statement of compliance, such as the one highlighted, will appear here. The section will also provide additional information about the calibration conditions. In this case, the immersion depth and type of temperature medium, a calibration bath in this case, are mentioned. For NML temperature certificates, a correction and not an error or a deviation is presented in the table of results. Instructions for applying the correction are therefore mentioned in the comments section. As an example, if 
when using the unit under test after calibration, it reads 100.5 degrees and the calibration certificate provides a correction at 100 degrees of minus 0 0.5 degrees, then by adding these values together, we achieve a result closer to the true value. Also in the comments section is a statement of uncertainty. This statement declares the statistical means used to determine the uncertainties of calibration. If uncertainty of measurement is of interest to you, the NML provide a course at varying levels on this topic. Check the website for further details. The environmental conditions during calibration are also stated in the comments section, as is traceability to the standards used. The presentation of results in an NML calibration certificate will vary significantly depending on the measurements performed. Here is an example of a pin gauge calibration where multiple measurements are performed on the same pin. The tolerances are divided into upper and lower levels. The error or deviation is displayed instead of a correction and the uncertainty is based on a formula rather than on a set value. The following example is of the calibration results for a gauge block set. As can be seen, multiple gauge blocks are presented in the same results table. The uncertainty values are presented in a separate table and the tolerances associated with an international standard are presented below the results. Now let's look at calibration certificates for electrical measuring instruments. Here is part of a table of results from a certificate for a digital multimeter. The calibration results are presented as the error of indication of the meter and the meter's accuracy specification is presented in a separate column along with the results and their uncertainties. This makes it easy for the reader to check the size of the error relative to the specification. Results before and after adjustment may also be presented on the same table. On the right hand side is an extract from the calibration certificate for a multifunction calibrator. This is a source instrument, so the result is presented as the deviation of the measured output value uh, from the instrument setting. Many electrical instruments are multifunction, multi range instruments so that the calibration certificates can often run into many pages. So this brings us to the end of the presentation, which hopefully has clarified the content of a typical NML calibration cert. For further information, you can check out our website or contact me at the following email.